Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel and possibly becoming a Patreon. Now this video is a review of the Toolkit RC M4Q charger. This is a mains charger, so you've got the convenience of not having to have a power supply to power it. You can power it with um, a DC, so you can plug in um, a, a bigger LiPo battery if you want to. But I would say more this is for the for desk charging back at, uh, back at base. So let's uh, first have a look at all the menus for this charger. Then we will move on to the where I show you the charging and discharge and then we will get on to my summary of the charger. The Toolkit RC M4Q Quad Smart Charger was kindly supplied for review by Toolkit RC. Now let me show you the charger. We've got the mains lead goes into here. We can put up to 18 volts input there from a, a LiPo battery. We've then got the four charge ports and the balance ports at the side. And then on the front, we just have a ex, um, exit button and a channel button and a scroll wheel and a enter button. Okay, so let's, oh, and there, here is your USB port for updating the firmware. So let's plug this in. Okay, the charger will come up with the opening screen where, where we can program our four batteries. But first, let's just have a quick look at the, the setup menus. Now you do you long press the scroll wheel so we can set up the power settings. I'm not gonna go into these in detail, but basically I think you would use the defaults. And then we can get the security settings, oh, whoops, daisy, where we can set up the temperature, the safe time, and I would personally leave those as default. And then we've got all the other settings that we can, we can change. So continuous work, complete, backlit, backlight, buzzer, and choose our language, and the theme, and set back to default. And that's the serial number for this particular charger. Now we just need to push exit. Now to set up the battery, we can, if you can see this carefully, the number is solid. If I click the channel button, it will go to that port. So this being port one, two, three, and four. Now we get back to here. I'm going to go back to the first one. Okay, and then you do a short press. So now we can choose the different types of batteries. You can see all of them there. So I'm going to select LiPo. We can say how many cells. So we just click. We can have that on auto, but I've decided to actually manually input it. So I'm going to say it's a, a so big point. I'm going to change that to 4S. The mode is where we can say we want to charge or storage charge. So I'm going to say charge, end voltage 4.2. These are normal LiPos, not high voltage ones. And then we can click on here and change the charge current. So with this LiPo that uh, for my quadcopters, I would go to, whoops, too fast, 1.5 amps. Now, you go down to here. Now you can see the option here. We can now turn on by clicking and you'll see the, the it changes to color. So now all of them are color. So if I push start, it will start charging at all four ports, a 4S LiPo at 1.5 amps. I did try to set it up where it would do different uh, size batteries, but it wouldn't. It, it will only do it this way. But let, let me show you this. So I, if I was just charging one battery, I'll turn off port four, three and Two, and you can see there only one and we will click start and if a battery was present it would start the process and at any time we can push exit uh, when we're charging to come back out and stop the, the, the battery charging so if we were in this window here as you can see now and we were charging we just push exit and it will come back out now as I said if I change to move over to port number two and push enter, they are all set up for the same. So if I change this now to a 3S and then I exit, if I go back now to, let me go round to one, you'll see now that has been changed to a 3S. So it will not, it, they, it will set all the ports up to the same type of battery and the same type of uh, size and whatever charge you set it up to. 
But what I did notice is if you're charging and you've started this one off, you can then move into number two and change it to a different LiPo, uh, a different battery. You will see later on in this video where I did a test where I charged four batteries and two of them were four cell and two of them were three cell. So you can do it, but when you change it here, it's going to change it across all four ports. So you need to be cautious, which you should be cautious anyway when you're charging your batteries. You must just check every time you go in and make sure that it's, it's the settings that you require for the size battery that you have. Now we can push exit. So that's all the menus. Now let's do the charging test. Push enter. We are going to change that to charge. It is the correct current for this uh, 1500 milliamp hour battery. And you can see it's on number one, port number one. That's cool. Push start. And we're going to say OK. After approximately three minutes, the fan started up. You can hear the noise and it's not it's not over noisy. The charger has been going for 22 minutes and 48 seconds and it's a little bit noisy. Ah, oh, there it goes. It's gone off. So it's not the fan is not staying on all the time, but it is coming on a, on and off. But what's interesting is that the internal resistance is a lot lower than it was showing on the M8S, which is interesting. And as you can see from the top, it's a 50 watt charger with maximum 5 amps by 4, so it's obviously 20 amps. And AC of 100 watts, because on the mains, this is a mains charger. Okay, fast charging done at 28 minutes and 34 seconds. And there we go, complete, completed in 30 minutes and 17 seconds. Okay, so we'll click OK. And let's take a look at the internal resistances, 3, 3, 7 and 3, which is a lot different to what the M8S did. I may test the, MS, uh, the M8S again. So there we go, that's the test completed. Now let's discharge this battery. So we're going to click enter and we're going to change this now from charge to storage. And we're still on number one. You can see the number one is highlighted and we're going to go start. It appears that the fan comes on at 42 degrees C. We're nearly nine minutes into the discharge cycle and the fan is not as, as loud as the M8S. And you can see at the top right that the temperature is dropping as soon as the fan comes on. The charger is not getting that warm actually. You see the temperature is coming up to 1.1C and it will start, the fan will start up at 42C, but it, the fan was very effective at bringing the temperature down. Yes, when I started this um, storage charge test, it was daylight, now it's dark. We're coming up in the next 40 seconds to three hours and the voltage has only dropped to 3.9 for all four cells. And yeah, it's taken three hours. I probably ordinarily would have stopped at about an hour and a half and given up, but I want to do the test and complete it to see how long it actually takes. So this will probably give me a reason why the fan is not working so hard because the discharge rate of this um, charger is not obviously a lot less than the M8S that I previously tested. Anyway, I'll keep on going and we'll see how long it actually ends up taking. And there we go, we've got an error come up. It says that the channel one exceeded save time. So let's go OK. And it nearly got there, but it was obviously after 200 minutes, it times out and says no. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the charger that it did that, or it just is a, has a very low discharge rate. What I'm going to do, as you can see, I've gone back into the window. I'm going to start it again and see if it brings it down to the correct voltage. As you can see, as the charger has been going for another 40, nearly 42 minutes to try and finish this process when it's uh, timed out at 200 minutes. And you can see now that cell three and four are at 3.85 and it's just trying to bring the other cells down to that figure. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the 
charger. I'm going to do a little bit more testing, which I'll do off camera uh, for it, but I, I think it's just not fast at discharging batteries. And there we go. It says it's complete. Okay, so it took another 45 minutes and 26 seconds to complete the process when I started the storage charge again. Now let's take a look at this picture where I connected four batteries to the charger to charge at the same time. You can see that it's quite difficult to plug in the cables because the charging ports and the balance ports are quite close together. So it would have been nice if the charger was supplied with four balance lead extensions. I'm sure you can buy those separately to do this, but it wasn't impossible to connect the batteries, but it was, it's a little bit of a, a tight fit. The two 4S 500 milliamp hour batteries took 30 minutes and 27 minutes to charge. The two 1,300 milliamp hour 3S batteries took 34 minutes and 28 seconds. And the charger's temperature went to just under 50 degrees C after about 15 minutes. Now for my summary of the Toolkit RC M4Q Quad Smart Charger. Now, what's great about this is that you can charge four batteries at a time. Uh, you've got four charging ports and four balance ports, which is uh, a definitely a bonus if you fly a lot. There's also the convenience that you have a power cord which you can plug in and so you don't need to have a separate power supply for this. So you know, that is a bonus, you haven't got to buy anything else to go with this. I did find that it was quieter than the M8S. Uh, now there is a reason for this, uh, especially on the discharge uh, cycle as you've already seen from the videos of me discharging it. There's a reason for that and that's because I think the discharge rate of this charger is a lot lower than the M8S. There is an icon on the screen, and I do mention this in the video at the top right, and I wondered if that little icon would actually go on. If you had a failure of the fan, that would actually start, will still rotate and show you that the fan should be working, which would actually be a good safety thing if that was the case. I don't know if that is the case, uh, but it could be. So it means you possibly then wouldn't have a problem with the, the charger overheating. Now let's get on to the, the elephant in the room and that is the discharging of this. Now it took four, as I beg your pardon, it took 200 minutes to try and discharge a four cell 1,500 milliamp hour battery. And then it took another 45 minutes approximately to bring it down to the correct voltage. So that really isn't practical, um, you know, to take that long and I'm sure if I had plugged in four batteries into it, it, whether that would have slowed the process down, I don't know. But that wasn't a, a good point. I did re repeat the uh, storage charge test to see if there was any problems. Maybe it was to do with port one. So I tried it on port two. And after an hour and a half, it still only had lost half the voltage that it needed to lose. So it definitely is not designed to discharge batteries. It will do it. Now, I'm going to come on to the tricky bit, is would I buy this with my own money? Now, this is, this is a tricky one, because if I wanted to buy a charger that I could charge four batteries at a time, which is obviously nice, because you're going to charge your batteries four times quicker, and it does do it quickly, and it is very, quite quiet. It is quieter than the uh, M4S uh, charger that I, I tested, but... If you wanted to just buy this charger, which you, you don't have to buy a power supply, then, and you wanted to charge up four batteries, great. But when you come to discharge them, or beg your pardon, put them into storage, you're gonna have, you're gonna take hours to do it. So if I'm going to say that if I had another charger that was good at discharging the batteries, because hopefully I go out flying and I use the batteries. So I think if the battery was on 4.9, it obviously won't take that long to bring it down to the storage voltage of uh, 3.85. Or if it's slightly below that and it wants to bring it up. But if you have any flat batteries and you've got a lot of them, it's going to take a long time to just charge them with this charger. So 
I would say yes, if I had another charger that could do discharging, then I would get this because I can use it for four batteries. But if you are gonna buy just one, you only have a budget to buy one charger, then is this the charger for you? Well, you're gonna to have to make that decision up because of the, the pluses and minuses of, of it. It's great, it charges up quickly. It, uh, if I remember rightly, it did a quicker job of the M8S charger but it definitely took a lot longer to be able to discharge it. So that's how I'm gonna leave it. Um, if I had another charger I can discharge quickly with, yes, I'll definitely have this so that I can charge four batteries. But if it was my only one, I would seriously think about whether I should actually get this charger. Thanks for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Bye for now. There is an affiliate link in the description below if you would like to purchase the product I just reviewed, which would help support my channel.